this point. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a, a quick introduction into ski tuning, which uh, having a sharp ski is the most critical part of a uh, skier, whether you're a racer or just a recreational skier. If you ski in the Northeast, you need a sharp ski. So, we need vices here. We've hooked up our vices onto, the, uh, onto a bench. And you want the bench so it's workable. You don't want it too high, you don't want it too low. Um, and one of the critical things uh, as you're tuning is to make sure that your fingers are protected. Some people use gloves, I don't. I've been doing this forever. And for me, a glove is like, uh, inhibits me a little bit too much. So what I'll do is I'll put a piece of tape on my fingers like this. Then I follow it up by wrapping a piece of tape over it, like that, on all my fingers. And sometimes throughout the process, I'll have to change it, all right? So uh, what this does is prevents uh, my nails from getting too short, and also prevents me from getting stuff inside of my nails. So once I get that all set, uh, one of the critical things uh, in tuning is I, you never ever mess with the bottom of a ski, right? Let, leave that up to the, um, the the place where you have them tuned, or I mean, when you have them stone ground. So, we, so there are two different edges or yeah. angles. So, yeah. So what what so should people base, do, and what should people not do? So, what what the skis come out of the factory with a uh, basically the bottom is a one degree, and the side is nowadays everything is pretty much a three degree for any racing ski or high end recreational ski. For a entry level ski, it's two, but there's no such thing anymore as a zero or a one degree. That, that's kind of gone by the wayside. And um, if you're looking at the ski, so when I say that, it, it's uh, so a three degree is more like this, two degrees like that, and a one degree is like that. So basically, it's pretty much only a two degrees or a one degrees. So um, what we do, uh, the bottoms come stocked with the one, and I just kind of leave it at that. My racing skis, I bring them to have them stone ground and they, for whatever reason, they put them at a 0.8. They say it allows the edge to hook up a little quicker. So you need a rubber band to um, take your safety brakes out of play. All right, so I put the rubber band on, which is good. And the first thing we do with the bottoms is uh, we don't want to ever mess with the bevels. So, so if I go, you do never ever take a file because if you take a file to this, you're changing that bevel. So all I take is a diamond stone. I look at the bottoms, this is a pretty big gouge, but I'm not messing with that. You know, if you want to fix through your gouges, you bring it to your local, uh, a good reputable place that can uh, do that. You want a place uh, that, that can heat it up, put some PTEX in, and has a nice uh, stone grinder, right? You don't want some, a shop that doesn't have those qualities. So what I do, first thing, is I take a diamond stone, that's all we do. The diamond stone looks kind of like this. Pretty cool things. I get these from Artec. Pretty expensive thing. It's like 25 or 30 bucks for this, but it works really well. It cuts good, but yet we don't want to cut too much. So I just freehand. So the big thing with freehanding is you have to make sure the weight is over the inside of the ski. Right? The last thing you want to do is freehand with this and go over the edge, right? Then you can screw things up. But with diamond stone, you're not cutting anything, so you're not really screwing it up. But so I'll, I'll keep my my uh, or weight in like that, right? But you want to make sure when you do it that you hear something. If I'm like this and hearing the P-tax, that's no good. So wait till we hear the sound of you hitting metal, right? If you're not hitting metal, you're not doing anything. Right? I go like this, up and down. You put some pressure on it, right? But but the important thing is that my thumb is on the inside. So when I'm doing this, my thumb's not out here. My, my, put, that's why I take my fingers. My fingers are riding along the rail here, right? Right along the rail, as I do it, um, uh, then I can cut some, right? I'm cutting. We don't want to cut too much. All we're doing is just trying to get rid of any burrs. And sometimes what I do to make it a little quicker, so I'll, I'll take the angle of this and move it that way, because it cuts a little bit more, right? A little quicker, kind of expedites the process. And a lot of times, but I'm tuning, I'll have like five pairs of skis to tune so I get a little bit of a production. So I flip it over, right? So for me as a righty, I'm always going on the inside. If I was a lefty, I'd probably, I would switch around and go this way. And this isn't too bad. Tim did hit some, a rock here. <laughs> I hit a Not rock. Not asking questions, just saying. 
And that was most definitely a rock on this steep little chute up yeah. at Mount Treblant. Uh-huh. And it uh, was very disappointing. As long as you don't take them out. So that's probably, I'm, I'm hitting this, uh, I'm actually putting a lot of pressure. So one of the things when you're tuning, you want to make sure that the pressure you put down is kind of within your shoulder span. You don't want to be, I see people tuning around out here. You don't, don't do that. So you just keep it like here. And all the time I'm like shuffling my feet when I'm tuning, right? Your feet, your, your lower body is always moving, so that your upper body is just confined to a short, compact space so you can put pressure, right? And you kind of need strong fingers and hands for this. So the first few times I tune, my fingers and hands aren't strong enough to uh, do more than a few pairs. But anyway, so now I'm flipping it on the side. So the first thing we do, same thing on the side, you always want to tune and get rid of all burrs and stuff. So I go back to the diamond stone for this as well, right? So as I'm hitting the diamond stone, I can feel that it's, it's hitting something, which is the sidewall. So here's your edge, and next to the edge is the sidewall, right? So there's a couple ways to get rid of the sidewall, right? So I can hurt this diamond stone's hardly even working. So what I use is this is a, a bevel guide. And this is a three degree. So if you look at it, it's um, what it's going to do. It's going to make this thing go go this way at a three degree, right? So I have this thing called a Panzer file, which will cut away sidewall, cut away edge, cut away everything. If you can look at this, it's got some serious. I'm zoom in on it. Oh yeah. You can actually destroy, yep. the problem with this, you can destroy your ski if you happen to go over the edge. The ski's gone. So you kind of have to know what you're doing. Tim, do you trust me? I trust you. Okay, fair enough. Uh, and the reason why I, I put stuff on my left hand, uh, some tape, is because when I use this, this uh, Panzer file, I use both hands so I don't screw it up, right? So, uh, I'm going to zoom do, in on your work, how you have your hands holding that. I'm putting pressure in this way. Pressure in, okay? Pressure in. In and down or just in? In and down. Definitely down. It doesn't do anything if you don't go down. So I'm pulling, right? So that being said, be careful that whatever apparatus you have is, is secure. So if you're, you know, pulling in and down and you're not on a flimsy thing where you're pulling the darn thing over. So... But you can hear that sound, that's the sound of p -tex. So I'm cutting a bunch of p here. So this is very, what we call, this is very sidewall high. So this thing collects, so what would I do with the Panzer file? I'm always moving it a little bit, right? Moving it so that it has a good, another cutting grip. So you can hear that. So it's getting edge here. That sound, that's a metal sound. So ultimately, I have to keep cutting sidewall until I get a metal sound down the whole ski. So your ears are part of the whole tuning process, right? Uh, so right there, see that? Nothing. So the middle of my ski, there's nothing in it. That's all sidewall high. So this is uh, a great example of what you have to do to cut the sidewall. And it looks like Tim's already cut a little bit. So he cut it, but it's, it looks like what he cut is, is not close enough to the sidewall. So what I do, now, this is a sidewall cutter, Let me right? I'm going to zoom in on that sidewall cutter. Okay. So the sidewall cutter, what you do is you start in with very low pressure, but it's the same motion. All this tuning motion is all in, in and down. Everything's in and down, right? So I start with little pressure, then I increase it, see that? I increase it as I go, but I want it to be a, a kind of a quick, quick move. Once again, with cutting sidewall, I, want, I don't want to get too far out of my spot. I want to be inside my shoulders here, right? So I'm moving my feet. And the sidewall cutter, I don't know if you can see the stuff flying off, right? That's the excess sidewall that he's got here that I couldn't... I'm going to zoom in on that. So the sidewall that I'm cutting... So when I start my stroke here, doing this, light pressure, as I go through, I increase the pressure, right? It's kind of a fast, strong inside. You have to go this way. If you ever go this way with the sidewall cutter, you can damage your ski as well, right? And Tim's going to Switzerland, so we don't want to damage his skis. Uh, those are going to have a fun ski week in Zermatt. Yes. So here's something I do that um, I was doing a clinic for somebody that was a pretty good tuner, and they never saw this trick. So 
as I'm a painting contractor, I have these um, these 40, uh, what is it, 40 uh, discs? 40 grit? 40 grit discs, thank you. I should know that as a painting contractor. <laughs> I take the 40 grit discs and I, um, I go over the edge, right? I put, once again, when I do this, my pressure is on the inside of the edge, right? And I go like this. And it gets rid of it, smooths out the big divot that, that Tim kind of left here. <laughs> right, smooths everything out, right? And once again, I can't tune until I can get to the edge. You can't make a sharp edge if you can't get to it, right? So now I'm going to take this panzer file again and see where we're at. See what I do. So we're at metal, 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 right? So now we have metal the whole way. See that? Yeah. The whole way has metal. That's so your PA. It's, it's really, it's a strong thing. I'm not, it's not like I'm doing this. It's like a real aggressive, strong thing pulling in to make sure. If this sucker goes over the edge, there goes Tim's key. Oh, God. And they're brand new. Oh, dear Lord. One ski day on them. Oh, boy. Okay. So now I'm going to feel these and from just doing that, there's so many times when I'm I'm in a rush and I have to tune like some kids from the ski team or whatever. I get a bunch. All you really have to do, if you're good with this thing, is use this and a diamond stone, right? You don't even need, you know, the, I hear people say, oh, we have a, all these different files. I'm doing an 80, 100, and whatever. You don't need all that. You just need to get it cut, get the sidewall cut, get the edge cut, then smooth it out. Whether you need, you know, the, the Panzer file cuts everything pretty good. So I've done so many skis where I've done just the Panzer file and a diamond stone. And sometimes, you know, uh, uh, a fine file. Um, so this this is, a, what I'm doing now is kind of like, uh, you actually, for the recreational tuner, you probably want it not to do freehand, but once again, my hand is inside the edge, right? So I'm doing this with my hand inside, right? I've done this enough where I can do it like this. So if I wasn't like that, what I would do, if I didn't know, if I didn't have that comfort level, I would put the the, um, the diamond stone on on the same three degree bevel, and put the pressure here, right? Then it makes it a little bit more idiot proof, right? And we'll feel this thing, and it's pretty sharp. Not totally sharp. So what I'll probably do, is cut one more panzer file. I'll do one fine file and then I'll diamond stone it and it'll be done. So I'll go, it needs a little bit more to be cut. But now it cuts so easily, right? In the beginning I couldn't cut this at all. Right? I'm struggling to cut this thing. So if you can see, when I start this thing, I put very little pressure, then I increase the pressure as I go, and when I'm done, I release the pressure. It's like it's almost like a feather in, feather out, right? So I go light, and, I, and once again, I keep my shoulder right there where I'm working. I don't want to, I don't, really don't want to do this with my hands spread out. So the front of this ski is pretty dull here. You gotta cut a little more. I got a little more extra. So now, as you do this, you, you realize, you know what? There's still there's more sidewall here. So I probably don't need the cutter, but I'll try a little bit of the cutter. Um, and that happens. See, see the sidewall just came up? But I can feel it with that. So I filled the sidewall. I'll take the uh, sandpaper. Now I'll go back to this real quick. Now we cut. She said, now it flowed all the way through the ski. So every part of the ski got cut. From, from tip to toe, I can run the file, and I just cut a whole bunch, right? When it goes, it's a nice smooth run from, from tip to tail, or tail to tip, whichever ski you have. Um, then you know you got it, right? Now it's a razor blade. So I don't need any, I don't think I need the fine file. I just need to go back to the, the uh, diamond stone and see what happens. All right, so we're going to wrap up video one right here.
Okay? 